Gurdjieff's hydrogen's kinda hard to wrap your head around, right? Well, let's try anyway. So first things first, what is a hydrogen exactly? Is it a chemical on the periodic table? No. When Gurdjieff talked about it, he talked about it kind of as a unit of energy. Think, I don't know, prana, or astral light, or chi uh, if you're into Chinese sorcery and five element theory, that kind of thing. That's what he's talking about. So one of the weird things about Gurdjieff's hydrogens is that he says that they're made out of carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen, and this doesn't really make any sense. One possible solution for this conundrum is that the carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen correspond to the four elements of medieval alchemy. And as such, the hydrogen itself represents the endpoint of a sort of transmutation of cosmic energies. Okay, so how is a hydrogen made for real? Well, you gotta go back to absolute abstract space. In this area of uncreation, we have something or some things. One is masculine, one is feminine, and one is neutral. And when they come together, these three primary forces create. And the first thing they create is a hydrogen six. A hydrogen six is the finest form of matter or energy, whichever, that can be created. Why not hydrogen 301? Well, those two things never really made sense to me. Hydrogen six is really where it's at. This is where things get a little bit complicated. As you can see by the diagram, we have all of the hydrogens that participate, well, most of the hydrogens that participate in creation. So these hydrogens, they basically get denser and denser as they go down. Now, you see the materials listed on the right. Those are not the hydrogens per se. Think of it as like the hydrogens are the energies that are found within these materials, and the number corresponds to the density of the hydrogen. So creation comes down and things get denser and denser, but we want to go up. So we need to find a way to take these hydrogens and to refine them. For this we have the Law of Seven, one of the laws of the universe. This law governs all things that evolve and grow. All things that evolve and move and grow throughout the universe have to follow through this law. It's kind of weird, but just go with it. Seven steps is what it takes, but these steps are not equal. There is a missing semitone, there is a flaw in this law. Meaning that if you want to progress, you need to add certain shocks at certain points. I mean, think about it. If you leave a cup of coffee on the table, is it going to get hotter or is it going to get colder? No, it's going to get colder, not hotter. Unless you add something to it, it will not get hotter. And so it is with man. You want man to just sit around and be in the moment and get enlightenment? Wrong. That's not how it works. You need to add something to man for him to change. But let us now talk about hydrogens again. As you can see by this diagram, this is what happens when you eat food. The hydrogen within your food is transformed into finer and finer hydrogens. These refined hydrogens can be found in different substances within the body. Seven in total, it all starts with the food we eat, that gets ground and turned into mulch, and then the nutrients of which are extracted and absorbed into the body. Now, in FAR 96, we see something interesting. This hydrogen is found mainly within the nervous fluid, but excess hydrogen is turned into animal magnetism. This is what makes a person attractive, and the more you let this hydrogen build up in your body, the more attracted people will be to your personality. So, next we have Sol 48, the mental hydrogen, which powers our thought process. Then after which, we come to La 24. This subtle hydrogen found within our sympathetic nervous system is the fuel that powers and activates the chakras. This is what Hatha Yoga is really for. Not for becoming fit or stretchy. What you do is you bend into awkward poses and then using breathing techniques as a pump, this kickstarts the nervous system and thereby stimulates the chakras. 
This is the esoteric reason for exercise, and this is the true reason and true purpose of yoga. So, finally, we come to C12, hydrogen C12, the creative substance. Most people frivolously waste this energy on passion and desire, but the aim of the true occultist is to store this energy within, then using certain alchemical processes can make the energy go inwards and upwards. This causes the creative substance to give birth to something within. But let's talk about that missing semitone now. If you remember me talking about the law of seven, you would remember I talked about the missing semitone. This has a catastrophic effect on the law of seven. As you see, when energy moves through the law of seven, it reaches the note of me and the missing semitone arrives. This means that at the note of me, when an energy passes into this note, it needs something to shock it, to kick it onto the next stage, or else it will never ever develop. Meaning that if this kick did not occur, us humans would end up without any magnetism or any thoughts. There would be nothing driving our emotions. We would have no sexual impulses and we would die out as a species. Nature cannot let this happen. We, for better or for worse, we are a part of the economy of nature. So she provides that kick for us in the form of the air hydrogen. If you can see on the diagram, you'll see that the air hydrogen that enters the body is at the same density as the me hydrogen on the food line. These hydrogens are smashed together by nature for us, and so the development can continue. However, you see the, you see the air hydrogen, it doesn't develop very far. It gets to me itself, and then it needs something to kick that me 48. Well, we have impressions. But this is where nature ceases to help us. It's not in nature's interest to have us develop beyond this point. It's not that she doesn't love us. She does, but, eh, you know, a girl's got so much work that she can do already. So we gotta put in effort at this point. At this point, we need to do something to smash those impressions into the Mi 48. To do this, Gurdjieff gives his students certain attention exercises. Mainly, they involve splitting the attention, one eye facing outwards and one eye facing inwards. The object is to not just observe the world like an awareness kind of Eckhart Tolle sort of thing, but what you do is when you observe the world, you observe it as an impression entering you. And as you observe that impression entering you, your inner eye observes your reaction to it. And just this, just this bit of light that you shine in the darkness, has the effect that it changes everything. It creates a new type of impression, a new type of Doe 48. It's, as Gurdjieff says, it's a double hydrogen is created. It's not just something intellectual or mechanical, an emotional part is overlaid on that hydrogen and that kickstarts the next process. We see in this diagram the result of self-observation and self-remembering. We see in the impression hydrogen it has now created two more hydrogens, a hydrogen 12 and a hydrogen 24. The same as with the air hydrogens, more hydrogen is created, and as well as a 24 and a 12 hydrogen in the air line, we now see a 6 hydrogen and this is important because no six hydrogen exists in a normal person. And this is what separates the true occultist from all pseudo-occultists, because the six hydrogen is what connects us and what fuels the higher centers that are usually asleep or dormant within man. All the other things like trance states and channeling and people who take drugs to try and provoke spiritual experience all that does is shut down the lower centers and force the consciousness into the higher centers. And this, it may grant some shard of truth, but that's, 
doesn't change the being of a person. The whole point of Gurdjieff's work is to end passions, end negative emotions, end fantasies, and once all of this stops, then energy is saved up and stored within the body to the point that it is refined, to the point that the lower self then vibrates at a degree that it can connect with the higher self. And this is the true path. This is a true path. It's long, and it doesn't have very many rewards along the way, but when you do get somewhere, it is permanent. And that is basically the crux of Gurdjieff's hydrogen table. I believe it was basically his way of showing what energetically happens within when you practice proper awareness and self-observation exercises. So yeah, uh, take what you can, I guess. Thank you.